think without it being international, um, Mocky Pie Melbourne wouldn't have been. Um, just a fact, things aren't shit enough here. Or rather, they are shit enough, but we just actually don't have the vocabulary yet developed on how to express how shit it is it actually is for us. You know, for goodness sakes, you know, so many people actually, you know, function on or below what's considered the official poverty line, but no one really actually has a discussion as to what is the actual poverty line. You know, I think it's something like, um, around the $700 a week mark and a shitload of people earn, you know, that amount of money, you know. And I guess it's probably one of the, the good things of what makes Australia so special is not that we have it so good, but literally because we don't actually know how to express how bad it actually is because we're constantly told that it's good. And then of course you get into comparisons, you know, and you start being selfless when really it's just an act of denial. Oh, it's not so bad here because other people over there, more exotic people are experiencing it a lot worse. But fuck comparison, seriously. You need to look at things in isolation as well as in a broader context. And the thing is, when it comes to judging, for example, the unemployment rate, for example, in Australia. Um, they do it with some, I think, like some five random people every month and they base the unemployment figure on that. So, of course, Australia is not going to be technically in a recession when you have flawed methodologies like that to represent Australia. Now, of course, there's claims that Occupy Melbourne or even Occupy Movement is not representative of, you know, the majority of people, the majority of interest, but I don't think either five people from, you know, unemployed, unemployed being representative either of, you know, Australia. To get back to the subject though, Occupy Movement. Um, different for, for example, North America, different for um, Australasia, different again, I think, when it comes to Europe as well. Um, my hopes... I had a little twinkle in my eye when I heard of Occupy Melbourne and all this little fanciful ideas. Um, now I'm utterly confused and I don't know where it's going to go, um, but I still see that it has massive potential. Um, and I think that's probably more what's keeping everything together, to be honest, is that we know this has potential, but we don't know what to do with it or how to go about it or where we want to go, and we're kind of just waiting for things to just build up back to the ideal state of what it was at City Square, because obviously City Square is the ideal, that is the mother hope, you know. So in terms of immediate goals, I think I would like to see it go back to City Square in terms of broader. Um, I hope that it, I guess, puts the next step into human evolution at the end of the day. You know, you have, for example, I come from a criminology background, a politics and a sociology background, and all the academics, they all kind of know that things are a bit weird and, you know, things are a bit off. They're not quite the way how everyone was expecting it to be. So they don't call it democracy anymore. They call it post-democracy, which is really just a euphemism for saying we think that it's probably more relating to a dictatorship and corruption than more so to a democracy. So while I, I guess, am... Um, I guess probably more socialist than anything, to be honest. Um, you go to get to things in the baby steps, you know, and this is where I guess I've also put my conservative hat on and things take time. And I guess my hope is that, it go, that Occupy furthers to the next step, which is that we go to representative democracy at the end of the day and back to things being in control by popular opinion as opposed to how much money you can put to a political party.